So hello there, my name is Lanius and today is a little story time video maybe or not. So for a few days like a few days ago <laughs> I was battling with a little issue uh, which had to do with NVIDIA drivers, of course because there is some problem in uh, Linux kernel version 6 uh, that uh, it basically doesn't really work well with NVIDIA drivers uh, in the way that Mm, if you switch to the TTY, the virtual terminal, you like get no graphical output. That is because NVIDIA drivers does not provide so-called frame buffer device or driver, which every other driver does and there was some fix in the kernel that makes um, that basically makes it expect that the driver that has control over graphics will also render the virtual terminal but that's not the case with nvidia and you may be thinking wait a moment i have fedora i have Arch or whatever other Linux distribution. I have kernel version 6. I have NVIDIA drivers and it works. Yes, it works because distributions provide some patches, some workarounds to make it still work. But in case of Slackware, which I am using, um, the kernel is rarely patched only if there's really some um, major issue like some machines not booting at all then maybe there would be some patch added before it's maybe fixed in the kernel but other than that i'm not sure if it will be patched but as far as i know nvidia is working on basically fixing the driver but well I don't have really big hopes that it would be anytime soon so maybe the next kernel patches will, will fix it but it's not really an a error or problem on the kernel side we will see but this is the background for my story today because I was using Slackware current which uses Linux kernel 6 6.1.6 now maybe 7 and yeah and I had these problems and I was snooping around what's going on why is it working for other distros and maybe how to fix it so I ended up like compiling the kernel <coughs> few times with different patches to no success ultimately <coughs> and of course I could have just stayed on the previous version of the kernel and just live my life right but no I'm kind of stubborn with some things like I cannot just let it go, I need everything to work. So I was diddling around with this and I finally gave up and decided to just go to Slackware Stable. So I went to Slackware Stable, which I originally wanted to hop to, but for some reason on my ThinkPad it wasn't really working that well 
I mean, there was some problem with Wi-Fi, and I don't know why, because it's quite, you know, old thing, but so you would think that it would just work, but I guess there was some issue that it didn't, but it worked with Slackware current. So I decided, okay, I will use the same distributions on both. So yeah, I installed Slackware current and uh, on my main computer, I mean, and never touched the ThinkPad again. <laughs> so I could as well install the stable version in the first place and have no issues with that. But no. So I went on to downgrade the system, which is quite iffy procedure, but I have done it before with Debian, I believe, back in the day, and it worked. But I suppose the difference here is that maybe, I'm not really sure, maybe I'm just, I'm just guessing that APT, the package manager for Debian, when it's doing some transaction like update I mean upgrade or installation or downgrade it's just working like it it's not stopping so it already is loaded has all, all the libraries loaded and it just works until the transaction ends but with slack pkg which is a package manager for slackware uh, it definitely isn't working like that because it's using some core utils while doing the transactions so the exact moment the uh, C library, the glibc got downgraded it just stopped working as well as pretty much any program on the system including the core utils so CD, LS not to mention the shell itself so when I went to trying to fix that I was uh, booting from a live uh, Slackware USB I was trying to cheroot to my installation but it didn't work because there was no working shell so I was then trying to fix it by just uh, using the live USB USB uh, slackware's uh, package tools which allow you to install in other root directory so I could just mount my basically my systems root and then install packages there so I, I was like downgrading the packages because I already had, had all them downloaded I have rebuilt my slack builds before that and I was doing it and in the end it seemed that it worked but there is a catch because even though I downgraded all the packages at least most of them because I was still finding some that I missed mainly from slack builds which I built before I started using SBO PKG and basically backing up all the build packages But everything seemed quite fine on the first glance <coughs> but there started some weird issues one issue it wasn't really weird it's just that slackware stable has pango uh, version like 1.40 something and i3 bar i was using uh, used some stuff from Pango 
1.5 so the i3 bar was not working then it was really weird so i quickly set up some poly bar and it seemed quite fine but then i discovered that uh, login ctl isn't working at all i couldn't log out with my tiny little scripts uh, it was pretty irritating i switched to xfce because i figured maybe using the desktop environment will just fix the issues i had but not really and like uh, also lxdm that i was using was kind of not really working like sometimes it was starting for a minute it wasn't really doing what it should do like mm, initializing the session correctly so i didn't have appropriate path some flat packs didn't work because there wasn't debug session which was a pain which made me switch to xfce then but like on every reboot even more things were starting to break and that was because even though as i said i downgraded the packages the configurations some uh, services files they were left uh, as they were Be of course i i had an option when downgrading the packages to just uh, put the default services and configurations there but i wanted to keep my configurations but it seems that they didn't work quite well because everything just gone to yeah so i spent like i don't know few days messing with the kernel which did do nothing then i spent like two days fighting with my partly downgraded system not really working and then in like i don't know an hour or two i just <coughs> wiped the root partition and installed clean slackware 15 <coughs> installed all the packages i needed moved some configurations which i already backed up and everything works now so i could just reinstall the system and not have all the headache so yeah i'm now on my xfce desktop as you can see i kind of uh, replicated what i had in i3 here as you can see the workspaces these are just default uh, xfc workspaces this is just configured um, to only show the button which has the uh, workspace name on it and the name is just the icon from uh, nerd fonts of course it doesn't really work like it uh, it used to in i3 because a workspace like spans on on both monitors so it's not like i really need maybe that many of them and not that you know i only have a browser on the first one and you know some messaging on the second one and so on and so on because i keep mixing it now but i think i will leave it like this because it just looks nice <laughs> okay <coughs> so i don't use the mm, whisker menu or the applications menu i've kept the uh, taskbar because it's kind of useful 
There is some system monitor here, also with uh, nerd font icons. The disk, my disk's monitor, it's called FS Guard. Also with the same icons I used before, you know, the system tray, some applets for notifications and all that stuff. And it looks quite nice. Of course, it's not tiling, but I already have my uh, shortcuts there. I can basically tile the window if I need to. I can maximize it with a shortcut, so it's quite fine. Only thing I was kind of missing was uh, the ability to move the window between the monitors with the keyboard so but it turns out that you can do it there is a script for that maybe i will find it okay it's this move to next monitor it uses uh, xdo tool and WMCTL CTRL where is it? yes so it just works it just moves the window to other workspace like that of course it's not like move to next and to previous monitor it just moves to other monitor but anyway, I have it on two different key bindings, the same script, because I just used to just doing that, like opening something here and deciding I want something else on this monitor, then this, and I open something else here. Of course, I also have Rofi with my programs, with uh, uh, commands, with windows <coughs> that seems pretty fine I guess after uh, fixing the issues I could basically what happened so it's Linus from the future it actually was the problem I'm mentioning later in the video actually that it was the script which moved the desktop window away and I've already made a fix to the script and a pull request so maybe it will be fixed of course it's only fix for XFCE but also the script is originally meant for Zubuntu so for XFCE so maybe that's enough so that's that continue let's continue with the video anyway <laughs> that was my story how i broke my system how i got angry and switched away from i3 and now i'm on xfce i'm not <laughs> copying linux cast because it's not because i wanted to but i just decided that maybe it's less hassle to maintain just desktop environment i guess it's kind of i think i do every once in a while that i get tired with you know building my own desktop environment and i just switch to something this time it's xfce which i hasn't really used that much at least not like standalone because i use xfce with i3 as the window manager but now I'm using it mm, as it is and I guess maybe the script I was using just <laughs> broke this workspace, this monitor somehow <coughs> because I basically have no desktop here now so maybe this script isn't all that cool hmm so now it stayed like that. Oh my god. Well, 
because as you can see I minimized the window and I have no response from like the desktop so I guess the script may have moved even the desktop window here which is not really that fine so anyway that's that so thank you for watching soon I will make another video about my Vim workflow, my Vim plugin and other stuff like that. I already have uh, released my ZSH dot files because I just want to use them in a virtual machine. Also, I'm probably going to take a look at Nitrux, which recently became another immutable uh, distribution which is kind of interesting and that's it so thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye